cut-through switching is a way for a switch to get minimal information about where a frame is destined and start forwarding that frame as quickly as possible. And I've given you a simplified version of a of a layer two frame on screen. This is a, a layer two frame. It's simplified because I didn't bother to show a few bits that are kind of leading up the frame called the preamble. And I grouped together the layer three and the layer four headers and the data. But in general, this is the basic structure of a layer two frame. And as soon as this frame begins to go in the switch, the switch is going to look at this MAC address. Remember how big the MAC address is? It's six bytes in size, 48 bits. This six byte MAC address is examined and the switch says, well, based on what I've previously learned, I know that that MAC address lives off of a particular port. So as soon as the switch receives just this much of the frame, it can start forwarding that out of an appropriate destination port. And the benefit of this is we decrease latency inside of the switch. The switch does not have to see the entire frame before it starts to forward the frame. So advocates of cut through switching would say it's faster than something like store and forward switching. However, because we start sending the frame almost immediately, we don't know yet, or the switch doesn't know yet, if it's a valid frame. Maybe it's messed up. We haven't even come close to interrogating the frame check sequence here at the end to see if there is potentially an error in the frame. We just say it's going to this MAC address, I trust that it's a good frame, and off we go. But to bring you up to date just a little bit on cut through switching, cut through switching is starting to become fairly popular again in some of Cisco's data center switches. Cisco has a series of data center switches called Nexus switches. And in some of those Nexus switches, cut through switching is actually used. But it's a more advanced flavor of cut through switching. The switch can look beyond just the destination MAC address. The switch can also look at the ether type. And the ether type might say this is, an, for example, an IP version 4 frame. An IP version 4 frame, maybe there's an access control list that's blocking this frame. Maybe it shouldn't even be allowed to go through the switch. Maybe it has a quality of service marking up at layer 3. Maybe we should interrogate that to see if we should treat this differently. So with this more modern approach to cut through switching that we might find in a Cisco Nexus 5000 series switch, for example, yes, we look at the destination MAC address. We can also check the ether type. And if it's something like an IP version 4 frame, that can tell us to go look into header information in layer 3 headers to check out things like quality of service information or to see if we might be blocking this frame with some sort of access control that's configured on the switch. But basic cut through switching, what you're responsible for understanding for the CCNA exam is that with cut through switching, as soon as the switch sees those first six bytes, as soon as it sees the destination MAC address, it can start forwarding that frame, therefore decreasing latency. The downside is we might forward a frame that's a corrupted frame, and we haven't taken the time to check that out yet.